Hey everybody, it's Dean Guccione for Tomorrow's Firefighter and welcome to this video where I want to ask you a question. As a firefighter candidate, do you consider yourself a future leader in the fire service? And the reason I'm asking you that is because you, one, you may get asked it on your oral interview and they, they could ask you directly, you know, uh, what are your plans for the future? What are your five-year plans? What are your 10-year plans in the fire service as you develop your career? Or they may not even ask you at all and they may just kind of look at you and how you carry yourself and how you articulate and look at the things that you've done in your life up to this point and try to determine if you have any leadership skills or you've been exposed to any leadership skills. And the reason I'm kind of doing this video and the reason I'm talking about this is because the fire service right now is having a mass exodus, meaning there are all the folks who got hired in the 80s. The 80s were, were booming and the economy really grew and cities really grew and expanded. And that required um, cities to hire a lot more firefighters. Well, now all those firefighters who got hired in the 80s are all retiring and they've been retiring. And what's happening is we've got a huge influx now of new and inexperienced firefighters. And as a result of that, because of all that, that change and, and all the retirements, we have a lot less experienced people moving up into promoted ranks to engineer and to captain and paramedic and all of those things. But even at the firefighter ranks, we have a lot of inexperience. So what's happening is not by choice, but just by necessity, we're looking at the people that we hire and sitting across that table in that firefighter interview, we're looking at at your potential leadership ability and, and your ability to develop into fire service leaders. So that's why I'm kind of bringing all this up. So one thing that I want you to, to think about are, are the things that you've done in your life up to this point. Have, uh, you know, just some uh, kind of minor things, but I mean, but they're important in other ways is, is teamwork and you understanding teamwork. And maybe you were the leader of a team. Maybe you were the captain on your football team. And, and you, had to, um, you had to set the example and you had to, to start developing people skills and conflict resolution skills and those kinds of things and, and be, able to, uh, be able to communicate well and be able to follow directions from your coach and be able to get the other players to follow your direction. See, those are all leadership skills that you've been exposed to and developed whether you really understand it or not. And when you talk about those things, believe me, the, the interview panel is going to sit there and go, wow, this, this person has been exposed to some leadership skills and abilities. Maybe you've been a supervisor at a job that you had and, and you're supervising you know, two, three, five or, or more people. And all those same kind of skills apply. You have to have conflict resolution skills. You have to be able to communicate and, and, and follow directions from your boss and get your team to, to follow your directions and those kinds of different things and build cohesion. and. And those skills are, believe it or not, are what interview panels are looking for because they're checking for the potential in your ability to move up into the organization. And it's possible you may be moving up in the organization faster than either you want to or faster than, than actually you might be ready for. And, and that's going to, to require a certain thing on your part. And it's going to require your ability to study and to learn the job and and to be open to actually wanting to promote. So, um, so that's kind of, of what I want you to think about. And, and I want you to look at all of those different skills that, that you've been exposed to that can show, hey, I have some leadership skills. Maybe you were the president of your sorority or president of your fraternity, or maybe you were the, the head team member in a college group project that you did. And again, all those little things that you might think, okay, yeah, they're leadership, but how they're going to affect me? Well, gosh, they're going to affect you in a profound way because they're going to they're going to put you at an advantage to other folks uh, who are in the fire service because now you have a basic foundation of some leadership skills. And now, when you're exposed to that, either in your education, maybe you might be getting a degree in organizational leadership or in some sort of form of leadership. Now you're going to have a better understanding. It's going to allow you to, to exponentially learn and grow and understand leadership and management and those kinds of things uh, in an easier way. So, so this is just kind of a quick video that I wanted to expose you to. And I hope it kind of made you stop and think and stop you in your tracks and go, gosh, you know what? I, I, I hear what Dean's saying 
And, and wow, I, I didn't really realize that there's such a mass exodus in the fire service right now, but there's a huge opportunity for you to get hired right now. And once you get hired and you, and you go through probation and you're developing those skills as a, as a uh, veteran firefighter, you may be asked, you know, depending on your, your potential leadership ability, you may be asked by your captain or chief, hey, did you think about promoting an engineer? You better look at maybe promoting to captain, um, you know, within five to 10 years. And, and, and that is, is a really, you know, it's a compliment to you, actually. But there's a double-edged sword there, too, that uh, because of the inexperience, and we get fewer fires in, in, nowadays because of all the fire prevention codes and building codes and, and buildings are much safer and all that, th that kind of thing. We just don't get that many, many fires. So the fire service is expanding, and we're being asked to do a whole bunch of different things. So you're going to be asked to learn a whole bunch of different disciplines in the fire service now. So it's going to be incumbent upon you to, to continually be learning, continually be learning all the different skills and disciplines that are associated with everything. And those are going to build your foundation for your future. So I just want you to be ready if you are asked that question, hey, where do you see yourself in five years from now? Where do you see yourself in 10 years from now? Or even just be thinking in the back of your mind as you're, um, as you're sitting in your interview and you're answering the questions, that the interview panel is looking at your potential leadership ability because they are. Whether they ask you a direct question about it or not, they are. So always kind of keep that in the back of your mind. And I hope that served you. And if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Like it, don't like it, um, whatever. whatever. Just uh, leave a comment or a question or anything. And if you're watching this anywhere besides tomorrowsfirefighter.com, Go on over there. That's where all the cool stuff happens. Sign up with your name and email address. It's free, and you're going to get videos like this every week where I discuss some part of the hiring process or I deconstruct one of the, uh, uh, the oral interview questions and really help you understand why they're asking you those types of questions in your oral interview. So, again, I hope it served you, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. So we'll see you next time.